morning, you guys. Thanks for jumping in this morning. Sorry, I'm having some technical difficulties. My camera keeps falling off the tripod this morning. <laughs> so anyway, I hope this works out. I hope you can hear me. I hope you can see me. How's everybody doing today? Hopefully we're okay now. I hope everyone is doing well this morning. Thanks for joining us. I put some qu a question up this morning. I want to know what you've been doing since churches have been closed down. What are you doing? What have you been doing to try to stay spiritually healthy? Because, you know, so many of us rely on the church and our, our worship time and our Bible studies and our small groups at churches. We rely on that um, to stay healthy and to stay connected to God. Um, we do that by staying connected to our body of Christ. And now that we can't do that, a lot of us, um, at least at Epworth, we aren't being able to do that yet. We're working on it. Um, what are you doing? How are you staying connected? I would love to see your comments. And, and, uh, and I don't know if you guys that are just kind of joining us through Epworth, I mean, it's taken us a little while at Epworth to build an audience, but, but I hope you realize that you can interact with this. You can type in some um, comments and whether you do that live while we're streaming or you come back later and put in comments, I do read those. I keep track of those. I get notifications on them. And so, um, you know, I will come up and then find your prayer requests later and I will pray for that. Um, so I hope that you'll interact with us. Um, Anyway, also, if I don't see you, if you're making a comment and I don't give you a shout out in the morning, that means you're not a follower of our page. And it, if that's fine. If you want to do that anonymously, you're welcome to do that. But if you want to be able to be seen and interact with and at least let me say shout out and say good morning to you, um, you you, uh, you would have to be a follower of our page or of my page or both, whatever you want to do. That way I can see you. Um, otherwise, you are you are flying under the radar. Right now, I see that five people are watching and I don't see any, any comments or any names, so I'm not really sure what that is. But anyway. Okay, so let's pray together and then we'll, we'll get into the word today. Um, good morning, Betty. Nice to see you here. Let's pray. Holy God, thanks so much for this morning. Thanks for waking us up. We just appreciate every day that you give us a new day, new opportunities to be in relationship with you and with one another. And as we get into your word this morning, we ask that you would meet us here, that you would uh, open our hearts and minds, bind us together um, through the power of your spirit, Lord. And we just ask that you would speak to us this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we've been talking for the last, you know, about a week or, or a little bit more. We've been talking about um, choosing joy and choosing to be in a relationship with Jesus um, because Jesus' promises that in that relationship, if you stay connected to him, there is joy in that. So really choosing to be in a relationship with Jesus is really choosing joy. And so we, we talked a little bit on Tuesday about um, what will steal your joy um, and, and, and the fact that if you compare yourself to other people, that can steal your joy. But I want to offer to you today that that sometimes uh, stolen joy and sometimes um, things will happen in our lives that catch us off guard. And boy, do we not. Good morning, George and Susie. Good to see you here this morning. Um, uh, if we're not paying attention, um, we can get blindsided by something. And just to kind of share that with you, some of you guys know, and uh, you guys at Epworth don't know this about me, probably, but uh, I'm married to a 24-year um, Navy pilot veteran who flew in Desert Storm and, uh, you know, has has a lot of uh, combat experience. Uh, he flew both A-6s and F-14s. And um, when he was in an A-6 squadron during Desert, Desert Storm, he was in a squadron called the Sunday Punchers. And they, uh, and they caught, which, of you know, of course, is the greatest squadron that ever was. <laughs> That's my shout out to the punchers. Anyway, uh, as the the Sunday Puncher logo was a was a boxing glove um, with navy wings around it, and and the idea was um, the concept of a Sunday punch is that that strike or that punch that comes at you when you're not paying attention, when you're relaxed, it's Sunday, you're relaxed, you're, 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 you're being lazy, and all of a sudden you will get hit hard from the blind side and you don't see it coming and that's called a Sunday punch. Um, sometimes you would call it a sucker punch. And, um, and so that was that squadron kind of prided themselves that we will attack you when you least expect it. I know, which is warmongering, but that, you know, it was a fighter squadron or it was a, uh, an attack squadron. So that was the whole concept. And I can tell Tell you that uh, we actually have a video uh, that really brought that home and it's a disturbing video for us to watch because it was a human being but there we have a video that was taken during Desert Storm of a person sitting on his balcony um, in Iraq uh, um, smoking a cigarette and all of a sudden a missile goes through the window right next to his head and it annihilated the building and so that was really the um, that really brought home to us watching that knowing knowing that our country was a part of that and that that our squadron was a part of that that really brought home in a very disturbing way that 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 Sunday punch is not a joke and is a matter of life or death and uh, devastating you know to, to think that that's that's what we're in when we're in any kind 
kind of a war situation or a battle situation. I want to offer to us today that we are very much in a battle situation um, spiritually all the time and that Satan is the master of the Sunday punch. And when we choose joy and we choose to be in a relationship with Jesus, um, Satan is going to push against that and he's going to fight against that and he's going to look for opportunities to hit us with a Sunday punch. You know, in the Garden of Gethsemane, when Jesus is with his disciples then the night just before Judas comes and betrays him, he's in there praying and we know that he's praying in anguish because he knows what's coming and his disciples fall asleep. And this is in Matthew 25, if you want to look it up. Um, I'm not going to stay in that scripture today. I just want to kind of tell you about it. Anyway, Jesus comes and he finds his disciples asleep. And he says, watch and pray. You know, be alert. Watch and pray so you don't fall into temptation. Because the spirit is willing, but the body is weak. And, and what he means there is that we have to be alert all the time. We can't become complacent in our spiritual life or in our relationship with Jesus. Because um, temptation is always there. That Sunday punch, uh, Satan is always looking for that opportunity to hit us with a Sunday punch. And uh, even though we might be spiritually saying, boy, I'm going to stay in a relationship. I'm going to choose joy. I'm going to be in a relationship with Christ. We we oftentimes are weak in our in our physical human nature. We are weak and, and we can easily um, become complacent to where we become vulnerable to Satan's Sunday punch. Good morning, Maureen. Thanks for tuning in this morning. And uh, I want us to look together in uh, 1 Peter. 1 Peter talks about, or Peter talks about this in 1 Peter. Let's look at 1 Peter 5. Um, and I'm actually going to start in verse 6 and go all the way through verse 11 because it really fits into what we've been talking about in the last week. Um, we talked about connecting and, and, and doing that by laying down your life, that it's really laying down your own idea of what your life is going to be and putting yourself um uh, submitted to God's authority in your life, but also on an equal level with all the other people in your life. So let's read this. This is uh, Matthew 5, verses 6 through 11. Hear these words. Humble yourselves, therefore, under God's mighty hand, that he may lift you up in due time. That's what we've been talking about. Cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Guys, right now, hear those words. Cast all your anxiety on God because he cares for you. And then uh, Peter says, be self-controlled and alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Resist him, standing firm in the faith, because you know that your brothers and sisters throughout the world are undergoing the same kind of suffering. The whole world is in this right now, you guys. And the God of grace who called you to his eternal glory in Christ, after you have suffered a little while will himself restore you and make you strong, firm and steadfast. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. Um, you guys, I want to just share with you that um, I think this is powerful. This is a powerful warning and a powerful piece of scripture for us. Uh, you know, Satan is like a lion. Uh, if you think about how a lion attacks its prey, a lion will kind of lurk in the shadows and stalk his prey. Good morning, Vicki. Thanks for joining us this morning. And uh, a lion will stalk his prey. And he will wait until some uh, until a cub or or usually a weaker animal or somebody kind of distances himself from the pack from the body of the rest of the pack distances himself and possibly becomes a little bit complacent and isn't really paying attention and then that lion will attack when that when that um, when its victim at least suspects it and that's what Satan does to us he waits for us to kind of become complacent in our, in our relationship with Christ and and maybe distance from the body of Christ and kind of let our guard down and then he will attack us just like the Sunday punch. He'll hit us when we least expect it. And uh, and so I want to um, I'll kind of think about that this morning. If we choose joy and we choose to be in a relationship with Christ, and we may have that in our minds, but we need to be careful of allowing ourselves to become in a, in a vulnerable position where we're not paying attention, um, because that's when we'll become vulnerable to the attack of Satan, to that Sunday punch of Satan. And so I want to warn us this morning against what, what I would call spiritual complacency. I think that was, is a very dangerous situation that could be happening right now with our churches closed. That's why I asked that question, what are you doing with the churches closed? With our churches, church buildings closed for the most part, and I know that some are open. I know that I, we have some friends from Oak Grove watching, and Oak Grove is open, um, but not everybody is going because it's, you know, it's boundaries that are not fun, and we've talked about that at Epworth as we look forward to trying to open in a couple weeks. Um, 
you know, having to wear masks and not having music, it, it's making people just kind of not want to go to church. And, and I get that because it's not church the way you're used to it. And so if you're not going to church, whether it be, it's because it's closed or it's just not what you um, are drawn to, what are you doing? Because it's very easy when you're not going to church to become complacent in your relationship with Christ. And, and you just kind of are going through the motions of, oh, you know, I'm saying my prayers in the morning or I'm saying grace at the meal. And, and, I'm, and you're not really um, having that time during your week whether it's you know a small group that you used to be in or a prayer group or a book study or going to worship every week you're not doing those things so now how are you staying strong spiritually and it's very easily to become indifferent and complacent and and not really pay attention and that is what makes you vulnerable so I want to challenge us today that we need to stay connected you know Jesus says I am with you and I will be with you till the very end of the age um, I will never leave you or forsake you so Jesus is with you 24 7 are you aware of his presence 24 7 how often during the day do you pause to go hey Jesus is in this room with me hey Jesus is going is doing this with me Je Jesus is paying attention to this with me and just be aware of his presence um, with you all the time and and I think I think even that just trying to be conscious of his presence presence will keep you um, spiritually strong and less vulnerable to the attack of Satan I, I think it's also um, you know we talked about Paul's instructions to the Philippians where he said, focus on what's good and holy and, and virtuous. Focus on those things and not the negative things. I think that will help us keep from be falling into complacency and not paying attention. Um, and I would also challenge you to be aware of your background noise. And when I say that, I mean, what 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 music's playing in your car? What what music is playing around you? What what is going off, going on, as you're on Facebook watching this, which is great, as you're trying to find it, what else is on your feed that you're reading and that you're seeing be aware of what you're putting into your mind and putting into your eyes um, right now and, and and really essentially into your heart um, be aware of what you're watching on television what is the news doing to your spirit um, those kind of things be be you know I used to challenge my teenagers when I was a youth pastor that uh, if you want to know what kind of person you're gonna be uh, look at the five people you hang around with the most if you want to know what's gonna happen to your spirit Pay attention to the noise and the people and the things that are around you that are influencing because all of that is having an influence on your spirit. Um, I would challenge you, do um, be very intentional right now to connect yourself to the body of Christ, to connect yourself to Christly things, whether it's, re you know, scripture is always there. Boy, you can never go wrong in spending some time in scripture, but prayer, pray for the presence of Christ in your life. You know, we don't have the spirit is willing, but the body is weak. We don't physically have the power to always stay connected. So we need to be in prayer um, constantly for that power to, to be in a relationship with Christ, for that power to be centered on Christ, because that's not our natural um, position. Good morning, Anne. Thanks for checking in. Um, so I, I just want to challenge you to be looking for God and relying on God all the time and not just when you're at church or not just when you're watching the live stream. Although I think this is, uh, I hope it's feeding you. I, I hope this is a great thing that's helping you stay connected, but this is just a tiny portion of your day. Um, I, I really challenge you right now to be super intentional and proactive in staying spiritually healthy, um, so that you're not vulnerable to the Sunday punch. Um, be in prayer, stay connected to the body of Christ who, um, in the body of Christ are you um, are you talking to regularly? Are you sharing your faith regularly? I have a small group that uh, we had to, that I meet with it on Wednesday mornings. Um, there's about six of us in that group, and we've been meeting for probably ten years. And you know, we suspended for a while because of the shutdown, and then we just decided we've got to find a way to meet. So we've been meeting via Zoom, which has been great, and it and it's a reminder to me. It's very encouraging to me, and it's an accountability to me. Um, we say, hey, how are you doing? What are you doing? Where where is Christ in your life right now? So I would challenge you you guys Satan is prowling around like, like a lion and right now um, you know we've been hit by the Sunday punch none of us I can tell you I was thinking about it this morning on March I don't know what was it March 10th or something like that we were you know planning for worship uh, that following Sunday and and you know just to do our regular two services and everything was gonna be great and I found two or three days later here we are three of us in the sanctuary um, with a phone uh, trying to live stream a worship service and and even that I think was kind of giant and it's been astounding to me to see how God has moved in that and how God has developed us and all of us and, and, and that we've had to all, all churches and all people in ministry have had to be really creative in how we can connect with one another. But we never saw that coming. Um, 
you know, we, we never knew that we would be in this situation. We were somewhat hit by a Sunday punch. And I think in times like this where we are struggling, that's where we have to really count on these words that Peter says and cast our cares on God, trust that he loves us. I love the very end of that where he says, um, if we stand firm, that the God of grace who called us to his eternal glory in Christ after we've suffered, um, he'll get us through it. He will restore us. Guys, this is temporary. We will be restored. We will be back in church. Life will get back to some semblance of normal. I think we, I hope we've all learned from this and it doesn't go back to exactly normal. I hope we, I hope some of the things we've added in our lives stay that way. But, but you know, we will get through this. This is a temporary situation and God is the Lord of it and God is with us in it. Um, so I think if we just stay firm and stay steadfast in our relationship, with him and trying to stay spiritually healthy and making that choice every day to be alert to the things that might be pulling us away from God and resisting those things, I think we'll be okay um, because it says to him, be the power forever and ever. God is bigger than all of this. God is bigger than the Sunday punch. We just need to press into him. So um, that's my that's my thoughts for you today that God, boy, God really um, lifted me up with that yesterday as I was thinking and praying about what to talk about. So I hope that lifts you up as well. What do we need to pray for this morning you guys do you have any prayer requests um my daughter had to um talk about being hit by the sunday punch my daughter um postponed her wedding this week so she has now had to cancel almost all her showers we have one more that we're going to go ahead and go forward with but she's had to cancel you know all the festivities and all the plans ahead and they were supposed to get married labor day weekend and they have now moved that to may which is a heartbreaking decision and she's one of many many brides you guys some of you guys know that i did a wedding a few months ago with the bride and groom um and two phones as the parents zoomed in or facetimed in so it, those are hard decisions so i would ask that we pray for all of those that are having to um reorder some really ex exciting and important things in their lives because because of, of this situation let's pray for that real quick lord i just lift up to you rachel and matt and to uh all of those who have had to cancel wedding plans and vacation plans and family reunions and graduations and all those things it's a heartbreaking situation when these uh, major events in your life and exciting things in your life have to be um overshadowed by um fear and uh, anxiety and, and an inability for family to come together lord so i just ask that you would bring peace to the hearts of those that are that are a little bit heartbroken right now because of their change in plans i ask that you would bring them peace and healing and that you would help them to know that you love them and that your love is uh steadfast and that they can count on your love even when life um and their plans fall through sometimes and that you your plan is to prosper them um, and that they can trust in that. So we just ask that you would bring peace and healing to those hearts today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. What else, you guys? you have any other prayer requests for us this morning? I would continue. Uh, I heard yesterday that Norfolk Schools is uh, probably going to go just digital uh, or just virtual this year. And so um, I know that's a very, very difficult um, thing. And um, we as a, you know, Epworth Preschool is trying to respond to that and see if there is something that we can do to maybe expand our ministry um, of, of preschool to help do some schooling for kids that have to learn virtually but don't have the, the uh, ability to do that um, in their own homes because their parents are working or because they don't have digital access or whatever. So, so we're looking at that. So, it, the, you know, opportunities for ministry for us, but at the same time, heartbreaking for families. So um, we could pray for that. Vicki says, pray, good morning, Vicki. Um, Vicki says, pray for um, her stepfather-in-law, Sandy and John. I'm, I have been praying for them, but we will continue to pray for them. Let's pray for that right now. And we'll pray for decision makers um, and families with, with schooling too. Let's pray for both of those things. Lord, we lift up again to you, um, Sandy and John, and you know this condition of their hearts. You know what's going on in their lives, Lord. So I would ask that you would crash in, that you would, with the power of your Holy Spirit, make your presence known to them. Um, Father, we ask that you would speak to their hearts and minds, that you would heal where healing is needed, that you would bring spiritual healing, most of all, and comfort. And Lord, we uh, we trust that you love them more than we do, uh, and we trust that you want to have a deep relationship with them, Lord. So we ask that you would open doors and, um, and create conversations and uh, all the things that need to happen for um, them to be spiritually connected to you and for you to be the Lord of their lives, Lord. So we just, we lay them down um, and we trust you with them. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Father, also we lift up to this, this morning all those who are making decisions about schools and businesses and opening and versus closing and and uh, and particularly about uh, children and how to how to teach children and how to keep children healthy um, so that they can grow um, in terms of their learning and their education, but more than that, so that they can be spiritually and emotionally and physically healthy and safe, that they can get the food that they need and the, and the care that they need. Father, we ask that you would make um, the right decisions and that you would guide all the decision makers to the right decisions. Help us to trust you and trust one another. Father, use this church. We surrender Epworth Church to you and Epworth Day School to you, Lord, and we ask that you would use us in any way that you would to be part of the solution and, and to provide for families. Give us opportunities. Help us to make the right plans and the right choices. Lord, we want to be your church that is used to love and to care for your people and especially your children. So we just surrender all that to you. We thank you and praise you uh, for what you might be doing that we can't see. Um, help us to trust you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Anything else, you guys? Anything else we should pray for this morning? Go ahead and, t and, and write in prayer requests. And uh, I'm thinking about doing another lunch with the pastor. We didn't have a lot of turnout yesterday. We'll see. Um, but you guys are welcome to call me. Uh, I'm getting a lot of feedback this week in one-on-one in, in -on -one conversations. And I love that. So feel free to call me at the church or email me. Um, I would love to talk with you. Uh, let's pray and we'll go about our day today. Let's pray together. Lord God, thank you for this time for us to be together. Thank you for this community of faith that you're building, some that we don't even see. Father, we ask that you would um, flood the earth this day with the presence and the power of your Holy Spirit. Lord, we ask for healing. We ask for healing and protection from this COVID-19 virus. We ask for peace for all of those who are in fear this day. Father, we ask for wisdom for those who are looking for vaccines and cures. Father, watch over and protect all of those who are in harm's way, whether it's in a hospital or a, a care facility or in a grocery store or cleaning somewhere. Lord, we ask that you would watch over and protect all of those who are in harm's way. Father, we want to be in your presence this, to, this day. So, um, pour your spirit out on us. Help us to know that you are there. Help us and protect us from the Sunday punch from Satan. And Lord, more than anything, help us to be the agents of love and care and reconciliation, the presence of Christ in the world around us. We just thank you for this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, you guys have a great day and I will see you on Sunday. Uh, God bless you. Love you guys. Bye.